Back in the 80s and 90s, everything was so much more innocent. Yes, video game adverts took a really weird perverted route across the 90s when the industry started talking about boys playing with their joysticks or a woman being tied to a bed because you were too distracted with your Game Boy Pocket, but characters existed on 2D planes and just wanted to save things, kill things or climb on things. Then 3D came along and it didn't take long to realise that piloting a floating camera around meant that you could get up to all sorts of nefarious business. I say you, but I mean horny ass teenagers, who the industry only continued to market towards, including scores of references to this sort of stuff in the games themselves. With so much time and experience invested into the industry over time though, developers have come to know our every move, and if you try robbing a video game character of their dignity, they're gonna fight back. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com and these are 10 video game characters that react to you being a creep. Number 10. Please Stop Staring Metal Gear Solid it would have been all too easy to make a whole list out of Hideo Kojima's games, but I'll at least start with something that I remember from my childhood. No, it's not the section of the game where you need to identify Meryl from his signature ass wiggle, yes, that actually happened, but something altogether more pedestrian. See, in Metal Gear Solid, you could hit triangle to look around. Doing so let you hoover up the game's secret photos that hid shots of the developers in various places, but stare directly at Meryl and she'd start to blush. Now, blush in a PS1 sense meant that her entire character model turned into a tomato, but keep staring and Meryl won't just tell you to stop, she'll straight up level snake with a devastating halo. Maker. It's like your parents always said, don't stare. Number 9. Hatsune Miku – Project Diva F Arguably one of the most important artists in music history thanks to not actually existing and instead being a computer-generated Vocaloid software voice bank, Hatsune Miku took the world by storm across the late 2000s, and I'm reliably informed she still matters today. As for that initial burst of popularity though, it meant that Miku was everywhere from touring with Lady Gaga to appearing on David Letterman, to releasing a handful of rhythm action video games just so that you could bop along with her. In Project Diva F though, clearly the devs realised the propensity for a 16 year old virtual girl to be ogled at from all directions, thereby implementing a failsafe. Should you try, when viewing Hatsune's character model in the photo studio mode, to rotate her into an upskirt position, the game removes her character model altogether, stating that the character cannot be displayed. Please change the orientation, placement, size or reset their position. That should teach you. Number 8. Trying to bed every new character immediately Mass Effect 2 is Mass Effect known for being a supremely influential and important sci-fi franchise loaded with explanations for everything from race relations to how guns fire, or being a game that let you bed anyone in your immediate vicinity? If it comes to the latter, at least Bioware tried to make a comment on it in the second game. Come the point in the game where you recruit the super powerful biotic called Jack, she'll head down to her quarters until you manually engage in another conversation. Do so and you can embark on one of the more emotive and rewarding relationships in the whole trilogy. However, as Jack is very much caged off and the sufferer of various abuses in her past, she'll point blank ask you if you're only pretending to care because you want to have some sex. Answer with I want you and before you can say multicolored endings, you're going at it right there on the ship's pipework. Filthy. Only, Jack ultimately wanted to be more than a glorified masturbation session, and sleeping with her here actually locks her off as a romance option for the rest of the game. Number 7. Leon the Pervert – Resident Evil 4 As you might have gathered, if there's one type of perversion the gaming industry has in spades, it's trying to look up any female character's skirt. Once the advent of 3D cameras became a thing though, you can just imagine the horrified realisation on behalf of the developers when they realised any player could just manipulate a viewpoint to be as creepy as possible. Here is where the societal standards of the time came in, as the vast majority of times that this happens in games, it's essentially thought of as playful. Not in Resident Evil 4 though, as any attempt to use the A mode to stare up Ashley's skirt and she'll bellow to the heavens. Screaming what are you looking at and calling Leon a pervert, it's a far cry from the rest of the titles I'm about to talk about. Number 6. I swear I did it by mistake. Lollipop Chainsaw Now, this is how you call someone out for being lecherous in a video game. Create a trophy or achievement that pops if you do something particularly creepy that then can't be removed from that player's profile. In Lollipop Chainsaw, creative director Suda51 was designing something notably over the top and sexualized and knew that players would swoop the camera in to try and see a bit more than what they were supposed to. However, not only does main character Juliet Starling slide her hand in place to stop you being a big ol' pervert, but continue to do it or move the camera around and the trophy I swear I did it by mistake will forever be locked to your game attack. 
According to true achievements of the 26,000 players surveyed, 70% of them have this achievement. For that other 30% though, I guess good going. Number 5. Cheating on your girlfriend in public Catherine Catherine is a masterful deep dive into what it's like being a post-university mid-twenties city living male not knowing what the hell you're supposed to be doing with your life. It's mainly focused on the sexual relationship side of things and puts you in control of Vincent, a man who's been dating now pregnant girlfriend Catherine for a long time, only for Catherine with a C to turn up and him to wake up next to her the following morning. What follows is a multiple ending extravaganza of voyeurism and truth telling, the game letting you know what players all around the world are also choosing when certain weighty questions pop up. Brilliantly though, as part of the reality of having a girlfriend while another tries to tempt you away, is Catherine sending you salacious pictures of herself that you can view on your phone. Try to do this in the game's cafe surrounded by your friends though, and Vincent will put his phone away, saying that he can't do this here. Where can you safely emotionally cheat on your partner in peace? Why, in the grubby cafe restrooms, sitting on a toilet seat hunkered over your phone as you browse through to your heart's content. I guess it's just like real life. Number 4. To be a pervert, Nier Automata and Soul Calibur 6. Back to how so many games employ the oh you, you little scamp style approach to upskirting, which for the record is a putridly gross practice still employed by the gutter press, Nier Automata introduced what's meant to be a joke that Soul Calibur 6 then tried to run with. In Nier, 2B's behind is forever poking out between a dress that's animated to barely conceal it. In a bizarre method of seeing more though, you'll need to rig 2B's chipset to self-destruct, as that blows the entire bottom half of her character model's clothing clean off. The same does go for 9S who'll have his shorts removed, and kinda props but kinda not goes to creator Yoko Taro, who said that this feature was only in the game because he really likes girls. As for Soul Calibur 6, 2B is a playable character. However, one of her victory screens sees the camera swoop in directly under her ass again as her drone comments that we are being watched from below. Because being a pervert is clearly hilarious. Number 3. A Secret Game Over Screen Dishonored Dishonored, a game about being a supernatural assassin who can morph into everything from fish to rats and back again, encourages pure experimentation with whatever's laid out in front of you. Do you teleport around a level, dropping in on a target from above, maybe possess a guard who's fired at you, freeze time and walk them in front of their own bullet? It truly was an exemplary first installment, but this mentality of the developers trying to think of everything first extends to a parodic scene with Callista Kerno. The game's AI has patterns and daily routines. Callista disappears upstairs to her room for a nice hot bath. As Master Assassin Corvo, you're free to spy on Callista through the keyhole or barge right in and have a conversation with her about privacy and wanting some company as she begs you to leave. Even better slash worse, you can leap right into the tub alongside her only for the game to give you a game over as the entire rebellion falls apart due to, and I quote, irreconcilable hostilities. Number 2. Don't stare at Norman Reedus' crotch, Death Stranding Death Stranding features a mode where you essentially trap Norman Reedus' Sam Bridges into a room and play around with him using emotes, perspective and other interactions. You can go to the toilet, have a shower, make him pose, but each animation is triggered based on where your camera is and what you're looking at. Case in point, decide to stare at Reedus' crotch and he'll immediately cover up. Do so multiple times and he'll continue to shield himself from you burning a hole through his nether regions, but keep doing this and Sam will get up, grab you by the neck and punch you square in the face. And number 1. Quiet Dance Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain Onto the complete opposite of what happens while staring in a Hideo Kojima game, as Quiet's role in Metal Gear Solid 5 became one of ridicule over time. Now, personally, I can see what Kojima was going for. Quiet's role as a mute mercenary falling in love with the legend of Big Boss was supposed to be a callback to Otacon's line about whether love can bloom on the battlefield. With Quiet bowing out of the story by speaking and killing herself, essentially putting an end to the otherwise wordless romance that the pair were supposed to have. Only, because Venom Snake doesn't talk, or at least talks very little, Kojima loaded the Phantom Pain with stupidly on the nose animations to show that Quiet was interested in our hero. Dancing around half naked in the rain is one, letting you take a shower with her as she moves suggestively is another, but the absolute peak of this stuff is the array of things that Quiet will do in the game's helicarrier. 
Based on where your bond level is at, although even at 40%, things get super, oh dear god, please no one ever see me watching this, Quiet all but puts on a softcore strip tease for Snake. Interpreted by the game as staring, even though you could just be in the iDroid menu, Quiet does everything from bending over right in front of you to dangling her boobs right in your face. It's ultimately a big shame, as on paper, Quiet actually has a pretty neat arc and a touching resolution. She sacrifices herself for her partner, knowing that speaking any word will activate the parasites in her body, dooming her no matter what. Her final words are used to save Snake as she calls in a helicopter, only to leave a tape behind that explains her name before disappearing altogether. It could have all been done so much better, but instead we got a whole bunch of TNA. Damn it, Kojima, every time.